In this video, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of retiring to New Jersey. So if you're thinking about retiring to New Jersey, stick around because this video is just for you. Hey there, my name is Chichi Agwaji. I'm a New York-based realtor. The specialty in helping seniors and retirees sell their homes and find the best locations to retire. In this video, I'll be going over both the positives and the negatives of retiring in New Jersey. We'll be discussing everything from tax benefits to the quality of life. So by the end of this video, you should have a solid understanding of whether retiring in New Jersey would be well suited for you. Let's kick it off with the pros. One of New Jersey's pros is in fact its proximity to New York City. New Jersey is a stone's throw away from New York. Now this is especially good if you have family who's still located in New York that you might wanna visit every now and then or you might want them to visit you. Being that New York is so close to New Jersey, this makes visitation really easy um, if you decide to retire in New Jersey. There's also various modes of transportation that the state offers to get you into New York, just given the sheer number of people that are commuting into New York from New Jersey any given day. In some parts of, the, of New Jersey, like the Gateway region, you can get to New York in under 20 minutes. So living in New Jersey really allows you what I would say is the best of both worlds. If you really are still attached to New York, you're not that far away, so you can have that small town feel that New Jersey gives you while still being able to access everything that New York City provides. Number two. New Jersey is actually very, very safe. And this is something that came as a surprise to me. When I was doing my research, I learned that in looking at FBI crime data, in 2020, New Jersey had the lowest violent crime rate per capita in all of the nation. Now remember, 2020 was when we really began to see crimes rise everywhere. But in New Jersey, crimes actually went down and for the, for the level of population, for the amount of people that actually live in the state, to have the fifth lowest crime per capita, that says a lot. So to further put crime into context, in 2020, New Jersey had 9.3 million people who were living in the state, right? Making it the 11th most populous state in all of America and actually the second most densely populated state in all of America. But if you look at its crime, New Jersey's crime is actually more so in line with places like Vermont or New Hampshire or Maine, which are the least populous states in our nations. So it's just something for you to think about if you're considering New Jersey. New Jersey is kind of in its own sphere, if you will, whereby it's shielded from this violent crimes and you don't see much violent crime happening in the state. Number three, education and healthcare. So one of the downsides about getting older is that you're, you have to spend more time taking care of your body, both physically and mentally. And New Jersey really allows for that. Many of New Jersey's townships offer continuing education courses for seniors and or retirees. Um, in fact, Passaic County being one of them offers continuing education courses for adults who are 55 years and older. And this is something that will definitely allow you to continue to keep your mental faculty sharp as you're getting older because it provides you opportunities for you to continue learning and growing mentally. So when it comes to healthcare, uh, thankfully New Jersey is ranked the top 10 states all across America for offering best-in-class healthcare services. So you have Hackensack University Medical Center as well as Morristown Medical Center are two hospitals that are ranked top 50 for cardiology and heart surgery and they are both in New Jersey. Now another thing to think about if you're gonna be retiring from New York to New Jersey as it relates to healthcare, if you already have doctors in New York and you already have specific specialists or therapists um, that you see in New York, you can keep your doctors. You know, if you don't live that far, your commute time may not be that long. You might end up commuting maybe 30 minutes or 35 minutes up to an hour from New Jersey to New York. And if it's just every other month to go see your doctor, you know, it may not be that big of a deal. So it, when it comes to healthcare, yes, you can have access to this top um, medical care in New Jersey, but if you already feel like you have great doctors in New York, there's no reason for you to give them up. You can just you know, go over the river and keep your doctors. So we're up to number four, healthy lifestyle. Now this is something else that caught me by surprise in my research about New Jersey. New Jersey is considered one of the top 10 healthiest states 
in the nation. Who knew? I mean, I think being from New York, sometimes you look across the river and you see smokestacks and you see landfills and you just don't think there's much going on. Um, but there's a lot more to New Jersey. I guess that's why it's called the Garden State because it's really healthy. But let me tell you, let me give you the actual reason why New Jersey is considered uh, one of the top 10 healthiest states. And this is really based on data that's presented by New Jersey's Department of Agriculture. New Jersey is the top 10 or one of the top 10 producers of the following. I'm going to read it because it's really, really an extensive list. So New Jersey is one of the top 10 producers of fresh produce, including blueberries, cranberries, peaches, tomatoes, bell peppers, cucumbers, apples, and literally the list goes on and on. So this state is covered with farms. It's covered with farmers markets. There's a lot of um, agriculture and production really going on in New Jersey. And you know, this is, this is news to me. So if you are someone who loves to eat healthy or you need help eating healthy, you'll be able to access all of these healthy, fresh produce if you decide to retire in New Jersey. So that's definitely a plus. All right, so we've discussed the pros so far and you might be thinking, get me to New Jersey. But there are some cons, so let's talk about those cons right now. All right, so we're gonna talk about the cons. The first con is taxes. If you have a friend in New Jersey or you've ever lived in New Jersey or you read the news, then you would know that anyone who owns property in the state of New Jersey complains about its exorbitant property taxes. They're really high. You know, and sometimes when people talk, you don't really know, you don't really understand exactly what they mean. So I wanna look at some numbers. I wanna really break this down so we can have an understanding and make sure we're all speaking in the same language when we're saying that the property taxes in New Jersey are in fact high. So let's, let's break down the numbers. So the average effective property tax in New Jersey, the average effective property tax rate, I should say, in New Jersey is 2.47%, okay? This is compared to a national average that's only half that, or less than half that, at 1.11%. Now, if you're coming from New York, you would be wise to know that the average effective property tax rate in New York is 1.72%. So yeah, New Jersey is higher. It's higher than the national average and it's higher than the state of New York. So if your plans are in fact to sell in New York and purchase in New Jersey, Keep in mind that your property taxes might end up eating away at your savings or your equity. The calculation that I would say that you should do in order to see if this is worth it is to assess what the historical appreciation of property values have been in the area that you're looking at in New Jersey. And if the historical property appreciation is much higher than the average effective tax rate either in that locale um, in that municipality or in the state of New Jersey, then it would make sense for you to move forward because overall you'll be net positive. But if the um, appreciation, if the overall historical appreciation is much lower, then, then you'll be negative. So just do that math um, or have your realtor do that math. That'll make sure that you have an understanding of what you're going into when you make your purchase in New Jersey. Um, continuing on about taxes. So there is some property tax relief that's offered by the state of New Jersey to seniors. If you are over the age of 65, you do get to deduct $250 from your property tax bill. And you know, that's, that's some relief. So it might be helpful and beneficial to you. Another thing to note about taxes overall is that New Jersey is one of 17 states in the US that actually taxes um, inheritance. So if you were to pass on, you know, some assets in your estate, to a beneficiary, that beneficiary would effectively have to pay taxes on the dollar value of that inheritance. So just, just keep that in mind as well when you're planning your overall move, you're planning your overall retirement, 
yes, it's great to make sure that you are making decisions that work for you, but you might also wanna think a step further to make decisions that not only work for you, but also work for your beneficiaries. So number two under cons, I have the cost of living. And that is because the cost of living in New Jersey is 20% higher than the national average. Now, if you're coming from New York, the cost of living will be on par. So you won't really feel things get cheaper in New Jersey, everything with the exception of healthcare. Healthcare looks to be a little cheaper in New Jersey uh, relative to New York, but everything else in terms of transportation, utility costs, all of those things seem to be just in line or right in line with what you're paying in the state of New York. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would that be? Why is New Jersey so expensive? It's much smaller than New York. Um, why are their costs so high relative to New York? My thinking is it has to do with two reasons. First reason has to do with the fact that there are some items in New Jersey that you are required to pay for that you wouldn't pay for in other states, um, such as going to the beach. I don't understand why going to the beach isn't free, but it's ex you, know, you have to pay to go to the beach in New Jersey, and that's something that's gonna add to your overall cost of living. Uh, the second reason why cost of living, in my opinion, is much higher in New Jersey is the way New Jersey is, is kind of structured, governmentally speaking. So New Jersey has 565 incorporated municipalities. It might be 580, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's definitely more than 500. And essentially, a incorporated municipality is a local government that runs itself. So this can be a town or a county, um, and they wanna do everything or operate on their own. So they're gonna have their own fire department, their own police department, each of them is gonna have their own school system, their own water authority. And you can imagine if you have 565 of these different things, there's gonna be costs associated with overlap, and then there's gonna be uh, uh, inefficiencies whereby you can't really achieve economies of scale. So imagine if five of these municipalities actually consolidated onto one. So rather than having an entire police department in each of these five places, you now have one police department. So you're not paying five different salaries for each police chief, or you're not paying um, five different salaries for each fire chief, now you're paying one salary, and that's something that actually can save costs. So I think costs are higher in the state of New Jersey because of the way New Jersey is structured, um, governmentally speaking. And I think there's, there's just a lot of political pushback that keeps residents from being able to consolidate or just keeps you know, local, um, local officers from wanting to consolidate as well. Number three, traffic. Uh, so New Jersey has some of the densely, most densely populated roads in all of the nation. And in fact, the New Jersey Department of Transportation actually reports that residents spend about 1 million hours stuck in traffic every single day. That's crazy. Okay, and if you're, if you're someone who takes public transportation, you might say to yourself, well, I don't, why should I care? If, people are stuck in traffic, but traffic actually affects everyone's quality of life, right? So it's not only gonna affect air pollution, um, air quality, it's also gonna affect, if you think long-term, taxes. Because if you are stuck in traffic, you are not working. And if you're spending more time in traffic, that means you're spending less time working. And if you're spending less time working, government isn't going to be able to collect as much income taxes on your income because you're not earning as much income, right? And so these things tend to have a domino effect and it might also lead us to understand why New Jersey has to charge such high property taxes while everyone's stuck in traffic, they're not working. So that's just something to keep in mind with respect to traffic is you wanna allow yourself um, time if you have if you're someone that loves to drive, you want to allow yourself that ample time to get to your destinations. If you want to get to Pennsylvania, if you want to get to New York, um, if you have a 12 p.m. appointment, give yourself ample time. You know, give yourself maybe th three hours to get to your destination just in the event that there's an accident, in the event that there's construction, in the event that there's rain, it's going to double the amount of time that it typically takes you to get to those destinations, okay? So just keep traffic 
in mind. Number four, I have super fun sites. Now, when I first heard this term, I had no idea what it meant, but let's get into it, so I'll explain. So, New Jersey, on the one hand, is known as the Garden State, and I talked about how it's one of the top 10 healthiest states in all of the nation. And so you might have this idea of your mind, that, wow, New Jersey, New Jersey has some things going for it. But on the other hand, New Jersey is covered in or with landfills. It's covered with them. They're all over the state. And what is a Superfund site exactly? Well, a Superfund site is known as a contaminated landfill. These are sites that are designated by the EPA that are in need of cleaning because they've been contaminated with harmful or hazardous chemical materials. New Jersey is number one in all of America having the most number of Superfund sites in a state. So it's something to keep in mind, right? If you're gonna be moving to New Jersey, you wanna make sure you suss out where the Superfund sites are relative to the town that you're, gonna, that you're thinking about moving to, the home you're thinking about moving to. Um, you can take a look at this map that I found online, which pretty much shows you that Superfund sites are spread out all throughout the state. There, there, it, there really isn't one location in um, the state of New Jersey that has all of the Superfund sites. They're distributed evenly. And while this is something that's definitely potentially going to affect your quality of life in terms of the air quality or the overall pollution in that area, it might be something that could also affect property values, either presently or in the future. Number five, coastline. Now, typically a coastline would be something that anyone would think of as a plus, especially if you love the beach, you love the sunny weather, you love the sand on your feet, but New Jersey's coastline has actually worked against it whenever any kind of tropical storm, anything resembling any kind of hurricane or uh, severe weather hit the state. So the state of New Jersey has 130 miles of coastline. So it's a coastal state. It's just, it's something to note that when Hurricane Irene or when Superstorm Sandy hit the state, they caused billions and billions of dollars worth of damage to the state. And, you know, it's something that can happen in the blink of an eye. It happens, you know, over 24 to 48 hours and then the damage is done. But then it ends up taking months, if not years, to be able to recover from that level of damage that, um, that some of the residents of New Jersey experienced during that time. And it's not just you know whoever lives on the coastal areas, the, the people who live within inland parts of New Jersey also experienced a lot of flooding and also experienced loss of power um, and also had damages done to their, or made to their property as a result of these storms. So consider these, these things, consider the fact that New Jersey does get hit a lot and um, you know we never really know what the future is going to bring when it comes to this these types of storms all right so that's it for this video going over the pros and cons of retiring in new jersey if you are someone who's considering retiring from new york to new jersey feel free to contact me i'd be happy to connect you with some of our new jersey agents to help you in your search and if you enjoy this video and you learn something new consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one